Hey, welcome to our daily devotion through the fruit of the Spirit. Yesterday, we started looking at love, the first in the list of the fruit of the Spirit. And we spoke about how love is something that we experience from Jesus through Jesus. And so pursuing the fruit of love means uh, pursuing Jesus and his love for us, which is really simple and true. However, one of the things we haven't yet spoken about is the immediate context of this passage, which does highlight opposition that we'll face in this experience of the fruit of the Spirit growing in us. So let's read Galatians 5 verse 16 and 17 says this, But I say, walk by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. For the desires of the flesh are against the Spirit. And the desires of the spirit are against the flesh. For these are opposed to each other to keep you from doing the things that you want to do. So there is opposition to the fruit of the spirit growing in our lives. That should not come as any surprise. There is opposition to a fruitful, flourishing Christian life. And the opposition named here is the flesh. Our our natural human self is in opposition to these fruits growing. So the question for today is, what about our natural human flesh opposes the fruit of love growing in our lives? I can think of many things, but I want to just talk to you about two things. So firstly, I think part of the opposition that comes from within is that we are more concerned about receiving love than giving it. So there's a well-known kind of Christian phrase goes around says that love is a verb or love is a muscle. And the idea is that love is, is not something, it's not a quality you have, but it's something that you do. Uh, which is for the most part true and certainly is the sense of 1 Corinthians 13 that we looked at yesterday where love does all sorts of amazing things. However, in Galatians 5, it is a noun, not a verb. It is something that we receive from Jesus. That's what we looked at yesterday. So how does this work together? Well, as in many things of the Christian life, it's not about or, it's about and. And in essence, then, what love is, is a noun and a verb, or to be more technical, it's a noun that gets converted to a verb. What I mean by that is love is something we receive. We receive it as a gift from Jesus. But then it has to be exercised. It has to be converted. And when we do that, when we are able to give love, when we take the focus off ourselves and our need for love and focus on others and giving love, we find that this love that we receive from Jesus is in plentiful supply and never runs out. So we end up experiencing it more as we give it more. The second opposition that comes from within, I think, is that to be loving is to be vulnerable. I think that's part of the mystery of love. It's the most powerful force in the universe, yet at the same time makes us so vulnerable. And anyone who's loved, even for a little bit, has experienced this. The hurt that comes from love not being returned, or rejected, or even worse, abused. And so because of these past experiences of hurt, it prevents us from wanting to love again. C.S. Lewis so famously said this about the vulnerability of love. He said, to love at all is to be vulnerable. Love anything and your heart will certainly be wrung and possibly be broken. If you want to make sure of keeping your heart intact, then you must give your heart to no one, not even an animal. The Apostle John says, 1 John 4 verse 19, We love because He first loved us. There's no vulnerability or insecurity in the love that we have before God the Father. There shouldn't be. That love that we have, that unconditional love, should so fill us up and so make us feel secure that we are able to give it to others, not fearing rejection or hurt, because we have all the love we could ever need from Jesus. So that's all I want to say today. 
about love but before i sign off i do want to let you know uh, just about some amazing kids resources that we've added to this so if you're at home with children and wondering what to do with them i know you've got plenty to do but if you're wondering hey maybe you want to teach this as a memory verse with your kids journey with them there's some amazing kids activities to follow with this you can find those in the notes on this daily devotional page it includes a crazy cool science experiment so go check that out but before we uh, sign off today i do just want to give you the opportunity or prompt you to think about this don't just move on have you experienced the love of jesus in your life because if you haven't then just simply ask ask jesus now to show you romans 5 verse 5 says for god's love has been poured into our hearts through the holy spirit he wants to show you so ask him to show you do you feel like your ability to love has been hindered by past hurts? Then pray also not just to experience the love of Jesus again, but pray for healing so that you can love. Maybe you're so just so desperate to find love from others that you've never had this sense of security of how loved you are. Let's just pray. Let's, let's just pray right now that God would pour his love into our hearts through his Holy Spirit, because that's going to unlock everything. God, we trust you in your word and in your love for us and in your desire to reveal your love to us. And so I pray you would pour your love into our hearts through your Holy Spirit, that we would be able to be so rooted in your love, to walk in your love, that we would then be able to give it to others without any fear of being rejected or hurt because we know that we're infinitely, supernaturally, eternally loved by you. May that fill us up. May we know that it's in endless supply. And would you enable us to love others? Show us how we can love today. Amen. See you tomorrow.